Hello everybody and welcome back to the Cascade Subdivision YouTube channel. Today we are at the workbench again working on 1213. This, uh, this Atherin Genesis GP39-2 that I have uh, started weathering. Apologize for the delay in getting this uh, first weathering video out and the second one in the series. Uh, life kind of uh, Life kind of happens. So today we're going to focus on uh, getting the model started in weathering and, and some steps to take to start that process uh, and prepare for later weathering stages. Namely, the three steps we're going to look at are uh, darkening and painting the grills, masking the model, and fading the yellow. So let's get started. You can start with, with uh, any step, really, but I like to start with uh, painting the grills, just a fun way to get into it that's not necessarily masking i think masking can be tedious and so as i showed there on the palette i am using a dark gray i think it's called a wrought iron maybe uh craft acrylic and a raw umber craft acrylic and i mix these together in in varying concentrations of each trying to get just a little bit of a little bit of brown a little bit of gray um, just basically to create a dirty brown um or dirty gray look, uh, kind of that grimy black that is uh, ever popular. And uh, just painting it by hand uh, into the grills using a uh, fairly fine brush with some long bristles, holds a lot of paint. I am thinning the uh, this paint with a little bit of water and just uh, taking my time working it into each, each uh, individual grill and uh yeah i think this is really uh really an important step to kind of set the foundation for weathering but also a pretty fun step because you uh the model gets transformed fairly quickly um visually with this step darkening those grills from the factory gray to uh to a little bit more realistic appearance now that's done i'm going to start uh, masking the model and First step in that is just very gently closing these windows so nothing gets in the cab. And then I just take squares of, of painter's tape or masking tape and uh, line them up and combine them. I know you can uh, kind of measure out the windows and the number boards and the lights and you know cut exact pieces for each of those elements, but it's just easier to um, do multiple pieces, I find, and... I don't have to worry about measuring. and But yeah, just take your time and, and make sure that all the windows and, and glass or modeled glass is covered. All of the lights, in this case, there were headlights, rear lights, and um, ditch lights, both front and rear, to cover. So now we're going to start with the fading the yellow. I uh, use this uh, craft acrylic called Hay, or Hay is the Color by Anita's. Um, I think it's a great great color for Union Pacific yellow if you can find it and then I uh, lighten that color with both oyster white and uh, oyster beige which are two kind of tan white and cream and fleshy colors that look really good on on, uh, on weathering projects and for modeling so essentially what I'm going to do is uh, oh, here are some of the brushes I use uh, a fine brush a thicker wide brush and then a medium brush but uh, this method is applied over a couple layers of dull coat which uh, gives the model tooth and uh, I basically thin that that hay color down and mix it with uh, oyster white and oyster beige to uh, to a wash like consistency and then I just apply that over the model and um, serve as kind of a filter to uh, start that fading process there's certainly many ways to fade your models, uh, but I find this one offers me the best control, and um, as opposed to an airbrush, for example, as well as um, the ability to uh, control the color and uh, add variety. And I also think the finish is, is very smooth. Um, it's really important to apply multiple layers of dull coat, um, thin layers. You don't want to build up the dull coat, but to having a really consistent coverage. Um, you can see when I apply that wash, if I were to apply it to a model that didn't have a dull coat, 
it would just pool into droplets and uh, the effect wouldn't work but the dull coat allows that that paint to grab and so i just apply this uh over all of the yellow uh, and in between coats when i'm satisfied and have soaked up all the pools of, of yellow i uh, hit it with the air dryer to speed up the drying process um, so you'll see me do that periodically um, and I do multiple passes, so I'll, I'll first apply the uh, paint, and then I'll wash the brush and come back with either a damp or a dry brush and um, collect some of those pools and puddles and, and um, just uh, make sure that that paint is uh, being applied in a very thin layer. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think it's just a very uh, very repetitive but relaxing process, and... Uh, the transformation is is pretty satisfying uh, visually as you're working to see that that dark factory yellow that up yellow get get faded and, and the model be transformed uh, before your eyes so just keep applying it um you know using the brush size that's appropriate for where i'm working i like to work in small areas especially around the cab Taking my time, making sure I get this step correct, and it's okay if you get the yellow on uh, on the gray or the the red and the uh, or the uh, numbers and lettering. I just come back later with a damp toothpick and, and very gently scratch that off and um, clean that off, and it kind of sets the yellow into the uh, into the model itself a little bit more, at least visually. Uh, help those letters pop. So I'm just going to keep working uh, down the side of the model. And uh, depending on, on how you mix your paint, you know, it could be two to three coats of the yellow um, or, uh, you know, anywhere from five to seven, depending on, on what, you're, what you're trying to achieve. And this can be done on freight cars and, and locomotives. And, you know, this is not a uh, locomotive-specific technique um, by any means. And you can also see I'm cleaning up... Uh, the seams along the uh, the long hood there, making sure that that paint isn't pooled. Um, we're gonna put washes and some pin washes in later, and so you know, those washes flow a lot better if the uh, the seams and and details are not uh, clogged with paint. So you just want paint on the flat surfaces of the yellow, and then you know as you can see, I'm gonna come back with. Um, a clean clean brush and uh, soak up some of that excess paint that is it for uh, this installment uh, next installment as you can see here's where we're, where we are headed um, after I've uh, faded the yellow I'm going to come back with uh, more detail fading uh, with oil paints and so in the next video I'll, I'll show you how I do that as well as begin to weather the trucks so hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, stay tuned for more in this series as we continue to dive deep into the uh, GP39-G weathering project. And uh, happy modeling, everybody, and thanks for watching.